Hello guys! Last week on Twitter, Taylor announced that it would be possible to use community starter kits if you don't like the new official starter kits for whatever reason. And this week, that feature was released in the newest 5.14 version of Laravel installer. And the creator of starter kits, Tony Lee, also tweeted about it, how excited he is, and he even created a separate repository with available community starter kits that you can use today. I personally think that it will be a game changer for starter kit market in Laravel 12. And in this video, I will show you how to use those available community starter kits, what they are in the first place. So what can we choose from including Blade starter kit for Laravel 12 without any React view or live wire. And also we'll take a look at requirements if you want to create your own starter kit for the community. So what are the available starter kits at the moment? Of course, it may change in days or weeks. So that's why this repository is quite important by Tony Lee himself. He has listed quite a few starter kits, including their popularity by installs. So if we skip those more popular ones that existed before, I've tried a few. So for example, there's Tall Starter by Morten Buck here. And if you want to use it, all you need to do is provide the using parameter to Laravel installer. So if we try a new project using that repository, here's what happens. So typical installation, like it would be in Composer or Laravel new, nothing really fancy here. But this starter kit then asks question for super admin. So inside of its Composer scripts, by default, it launches this PHP Artisan app create super admin, which is outside of the default Laravel or starter kits. So I've created that admin and let's see what happens. Also, we agree the NPM commands, which probably comes from the starter kit from Laravel by default. And that's it. Now, if I launch the homepage, it is this. So it's not the same as Laravel starter kit. We click register. And this is from what I remember, one of the auth layouts of the new starter kits. Let's try to register with fake filler Chrome extension. And the design is similar with top layout, but the footer is different. And also, if you took a look at the feature of this installer, it also includes user management and a few things like best, live wire alerts, and more. So each starter kit will provide some kind of features on top of or instead of official starter kits. So you need to read the docs for each of them separately. Another example comes from Pushpack, who released a few starter kits already. So he had Larasonic previously, even before that feature. And now it became possible to install with Laravel new using. So if we try that, for example, if we try Larasonic React, we install and let's see what happens. I see a lot of migration tables, so it has some features on top. NPM install, yes. So I see it has teams and subscriptions. This is interesting. And this is where I get the error that something was wrong with React versions. Okay, so this is the thing. With community starter kits, you rely on those community members to update their starter kits and make it work. Out of curiosity, I've tried Larasonic View, and this seems to be successful. Let's launch the page. And wow, the homepage design is totally different with a lot of things here. Let's try to register. Fake filler Chrome extension. I agree. Register. And I get the error because MailPit is used by default in .env for sending emails. And users by default in this starter kit are set to have email verification by default. Again, difference from the default starter kit of the official Laravel. But I was very curious to make this one work. So in the user model, I've commented out must verify email, and then the registration succeeded and I landed inside. As you can see, similar design to the default starter kit, but with features aligned differently. This one is similar to Laravel Breeze or Jetstream. Also, there are API tokens, API documentation, dashboard, and also chat that requires pro subscription. So there's probably a business model behind that Larasonic. So again, check out the documentation for that. And also later after Larasonic, same pushback released another set of starter kits. So it's not one, it was Three just released a bit later, View React and Livewire with these features on top of the default starter kits. So it didn't change any features of starter kits, it just added more. And another starter kit I will demonstrate, which probably impressed me the most, is Blade starter kit. Let's see what Christian Taylor has built for us. Again, we're launching Laravel new using this starter kit, and let's see what happens. Default database tables, yes for NPM, and that's it. 
And if we launch the page, we see the default Laravel 12 with login and register. Register looks similar to the new starter kits. When we fill that in and create account, we land on a dashboard that looks like default Laravel starter kit, right? But now let's take a look at the code. If we go to Composer JSON, do you see any live wire or flux? I don't. If we take a look at Package JSON, do you see any React or Vue? I don't. And if we take a look at the code of sidebar here for navigation, this is the sidebar blade file, which has X sidebar, X everything, and no flux, no React and TypeScript. So what Christian did was recreated the same design or very similar design with just blade. In my opinion, very impressive. And in my opinion, this is kind of exactly what some community members wanted. Just a starter kit without live wire view or react dependencies. Of course, I didn't dig deeper, so I cannot really guarantee that this starter kit works and looks exactly the same. But my first impression is very positive. You should try it out. So you get the idea, Laravel new and then choose the starter kit. But the problem is, maybe not the problem, but the reality is that Laravel team doesn't guarantee anything about those community starter kits. They don't check them, approve them, they just redirect the installer to install something else. So you need to read the documentation in full with features, so starter kit should match your expectation, including the support, including the license, what you may or may not use, and including even security issues. Do you trust that person or that company to create starter kits without any security issues? Because if we take a look at what's happening behind the scenes of that Laravel new using, this is the commit by Tony and approved by Taylor, as I understand, all that commit actually does after parsing that using parameter. It changes the composer create project underlying command to new direction of different starter kit. So there's no validation of that starter kit except for that it has be on packages and we'll get to that in a minute. But everything else in that commit is about parsing the parameters and redirecting to one or another starter kit, which is now just more flexible not just Laravel, whatever starter kit, but anything from the community. So again, this is a proof that Laravel core team isn't responsible for any community starter kit behavior. And even in his repository, Tony Lee made a disclaimer, important, be cautious when installing. Research and learn more about the project. And I think for many starter kit creators, the starter kit will be kind of a hype project on hype of something they want to envision on top or instead of Laravel starter kit. But we'll see if those starter kits will be updated after months or years. Because still there will be changes in the Laravel starter kit, in underlying Laravel framework. New versions will come, security patches and whether those new community starter kits will be updated, we'll see. And finally, what if you want to create your own starter kit? Basically, it can be any Laravel repository. So Tony Lee explained it on Twitter. It should be a Laravel application, not a package. Also, you should add post create project command with example of React starter kit in your composer JSON and also add your project to packages. Basically, that's it. So you can create your own starter kit with whatever features you want. It may not even include auth, as I understand. It may be just homepage starter kit, API starter kit, or whatever you want. The word starter kit doesn't include any features, any requirements. Laravel starter kit. What features are inside, now it's your decision. So with all that overview, do you have any favorite starter kits that you will use, or you will stick to the defaults, or you will still use Jessrim or Breeze, or you have your own starter kit, or maybe planning to create your own? Let's discuss in the comments below. Or maybe you want us, Laravel Daily team, to create a community starter kit. Then describe your ideas in the comments below as well. And if you want to support our work of Laravel Daily here on YouTube and elsewhere, this is the best time to do that because there's a promotion, I'm reminding you. Until next Tuesday, March 18th, there's 40% off yearly or lifetime membership that will include more new courses upcoming on Laravel 12 updates, starter kits, Laravel Cloud, and others. But for now, that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.